population is getting older, which means we've got more retirees per worker than we used to. We're going to have to make some modest adjustments in order to strengthen it. There are some fairly modest changes that could be made without resorting to any newfangled schemes that would continue Social Security for another 75 years where everybody would get the benefits that they deserve. So that's the president of Social Security quoting the numbers out of Washington that trust fund will be exhausted by 2037. And for more than half of those current receiving, uh, currently receiving a Social Security check, 55% to be exact, that check provides the majority of their income. Art Laffer is the former economic advisor for President Reagan. He's live in Nashville. Art, welcome back here. I want to talk about Social Security. Also, in a moment, I'll reflect on these jobs numbers that just came out about 45 minutes ago. Uh, the president says it's not a crisis. Some modest adjustments, some tweaks. Uh, is that all we need? Uh, no, not really. What he's talking about is he's going to cut benefits. I mean, that's what's going to happen. Uh, yeah, uh, this is the highest we've seen since November of last year. I mean, what do you think about that? Well, it just tells me that, you know, they've got all these fancy economists with all their highfalutin ideas, and frankly, it's Econ 1. You can't love jobs and hate the people who create them. And this administration is anti-business, and then they wonder why there are so many job losses. If you tax people who work, Bill, and, and you pay people not to work, don't be surprised if you get a lot of people not working. The answer here is really simple. Extend the tax cuts for the rich. The rich are the ones that basically give you these you jobs. Don't think that's that's gonna, gonna, you don't think that's going to happen, though, do you? No, I, mean, I don't. This against the president's bedrock principles. Exactly. It does completely. But it also guarantees that you're going to have high unemployment. He's a catastrophe on unemployment because... He won't look at what the reality is, is that these people are the job creators, these companies are the job creators, and if you hate them, if you declare war on them, don't be surprised if they don't create jobs. Did you hear the longest period? Did you hear what Barney Frank said to you Neil Cavuto on the Fox Business Network? He talked about the stimulus plan and about whether it's going to go higher or lower than 8% for unemployment. I just, I'll, I'll roll this, and I'll get you to react, okay? Sure. Barney Frank from the other night. Love you. The, the recovery bill, otherwise known as the stimulus bill, he predicted, or his age predicted at the time, that if it passed, unemployment would get below 8%. That was a dumb thing to do. In the first place, nobody knows. In the second place, what you should have said is, if we pass this, it'll be better than if we don't pass it. Uh, that's the Democrats saying it was dumb to even yeah. suggest. Of course, the mosque battle in New York has prompted a lot of cries for religious freedom. So now, out in Utah, why are they forcing people to remove crosses? Why would that be happening? It's a good question. We're going to ask you. Over the cross, 14 of them meant to commemorate fallen highway patrol troopers in Utah. They are declared unconstitutional by a federal appeals court. Alicia Cunha is on the story live out of Denver today. Why is this against the Constitution, Alicia? Hi, Bill. Well, the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals here in Denver agreed with American Atheists Inc. when they said that this violates the protection against uh, the violation of separation of church and state. Um, and this is for a couple of reasons. These 14 crosses are on public and private land. They're paid for by a private organization. However, on the crosses is the official logo of the U Utah Highway Patrol. And American Atheists Inc. say that that's unconstitutional, that it's against the law. Now, the Alliance Defense Fund, a group of attorneys um, who are Christian, is, argued that these are secular crosses, that they are there just to commemorate all of the officers who have fallen. However, the Tenth Circuit disagreed with that and said any reasonable person who looks at a cross will associate it with Christianity. Bill? So what is the reaction from so? those who are fighting to keep the crosses exactly where they are? Well, the Alliance Defense Fund right now is reviewing its appeal options and shortly after the decision was handed down, released a statement saying in part, one atheist group's agenda shouldn't diminish the sacrifice made by Utah Highway Patrol officers and their families. The families of the fallen should be allowed to honor their loved ones as they wish. So Alicia, thank you for that. Alicia Cooney is on that story at Denver. We'll see what happens during the appeals process. warning the GOP to be a bit careful when addressing the Ground Zero mosque debate, especially as they head into election season. That man, Ed Kennedy, <coughs> joins me now. He was the chairman of the Republican National Committee as well as counselor to President George W. Bush. Ed, good morning. Always good to see you. 
Good morning, Martha. Thanks for having me on. Well, good to have you. So, so why are you sort of warning Republicans that they should be a little bit careful with how they deal with this issue? Well, a couple things, Martha. Every day that we are not talking about this administration's job-killing policies, massive debt, and excessive taxation, is a day we're not really talking about the things most voters are likely to have in mind when they vote on November 2nd. So it's a little bit of, you know, not talking about something that, that probably is more vote determinative. Secondly, President Obama, when he weighed in and elevated this issue, did so in a way that essentially smeared those who are opposed to this particular mosque led by this controversial imam at this very, uh, you know, revered site at Ground Zero as saying that those who are opposed to it essentially seek to deny Muslims their religious freedom and would essentially try to shut down mosques all around the country, which is, of course, like I say, a smear. Right. He backed off of that, but the, a lot in the media, uh, you know, continue to try right. to look at it through that narrative. We have to be careful not to fall into that trap or allow them to distort it that way. I hear what you're saying, and, and I know that, you know, you very much want to, you know, support Republican candidates out there and, you know, hopefully give them some direction that heads them in the right way. So what I'm hearing from you is that you want them to focus more on the economy, focus on the things that you think that the people really care about across the country. I'm also hearing what you're saying, that you think that this mosque issue is more detrimental to the president than any other particular politicians around the country. Well, I think it's detrimental to the president and his party, and Speaker Pelosi compounded it yesterday when she essentially said that we ought to look into the finances of people who are opposed to the mosque at Ground Zero. Now, can you imagine someone yeah, who had, was victimized, who's, who lost a family member, a husband, a wife, a son, a daughter, a father, a mother in uh, the attacks of September 11th who have a concern about this mosque at Ground Zero. And now the Speaker of the House is saying the federal government may need to look into your finances. We may need to look into your checking account and see who's, uh, you know, where you're getting money from. Yeah, it is it really intimidation. They tried to sort of broaden it a little bit uh, later in the afternoon in her office by saying that they also did well, want, and we raised a question here yesterday, uh, you know, but they don't want to look into the funding of who's building the mosque. And now she said that actually they do want to look into that. We'll see how far that part of the investigation goes. concerns in the effort to stop Iran from building a nuclear weapon. Israel may have only days to strike a nuclear facility. If the bombers fly, what would that mean for U.S. forces already stationed in Iraq and in Afghanistan, a nuclear reactor with the help of Russia? And there is new speculation that Israel may strike that facility. Uh, the former U.S. ambassador to the U.N. is John Bolton. He said on our program just yesterday that if Iran goes nuclear this weekend, this is a clear signal that the U.S., and the international community has failed. Well, if in fact the insertion of these fuel rods go ahead and they begin to power the reactor up, it's an enormous victory for Iran. It's a sign we have once again failed to stop them at a major landmark on their path to nuclear weapons. Again, Bolton from yesterday, and because you asked, Nick in Colorado writes this, what would the fallout from a strike against Iran mean for U.S. troops currently deployed in Iraq and Afghanistan? At the top of our program, we talked about the withdrawal of combat forces in Iraq. Right now, there are about 56,000 troops in Iraq. That number will go down about 50,000 next month. There are currently 95,000 U.S. Marines and soldiers on the ground in Afghanistan. That number will go over 100,000 in the coming months. Jim Walsh, international security expert and research associate for MIT Security Studies Program, with us now for an answer. What could happen with U.S. forces if an attack took place, Jim? Well, Bill, I think they would be target number one for Iranian retaliation. And in fact, I think that's the chief reason why the U.S. military, the U.S. military, has opposed an attack on Iran, because it doesn't want to put at risk the young servicemen and servicewomen who are serving both in Iraq and Afghanistan, countries that border Iran and would be targets if we attacked Iran. Would Iran reach out in Iraq more so than they've allegedly done in the past, where they reach into the hand, or reach their hand rather, into Afghanistan? Uh, and take our forces on? I think they would do both, and they would also use proxies. You know, I've spoken to officials in the past in the Pentagon who suggested that they did a little of that back in 2007, and you saw a spike in IED deaths among U.S. soldiers, uh, and I think you would see a much more concerted effort on their part. Yeah, the U.S. Uh, the US military has got those big IEDs were always supplied from Iran. That's always been the suspicion. How much would the military war game this possibility? Would, would, would we sit down with the Israelis and try and figure out the scenarios that could happen if, Jim? Yeah, well, I think uh, definitely the U.S. 
military planners have thought long and hard about this, uh, more so, I think, than the Israeli military planners, because they don't have to deal with this as a problem. But it's not a problem that you can somehow easily solve. I mean, in part because of geography. There's no getting around the geography and the fact that Iran shares a long border with Iraq and a border uh, with Afghanistan. You can't build a wall to keep everyone out. So I, I just think it would be extraordinarily difficult to prevent uh, retaliation on the part of Iran. I understand your point there. One more point here that Bolton made yesterday. He doesn't think this will happen after the weekend because there's too much collateral damage that could happen if you blow up an active nuclear reactor. In a word, Jim, will, it, will Israel make a move or will they stand down? I think John Bolton got a lot of this wrong, but to answer your question, no, they will not attack. Israelis, when they attack, they don't say anything before the attack. If they're talking about it, they're not going to do it. Point taken. Jim Walsh, thank you. Out of MIT in Boston today. Thanks, Jim. Uh, the top stories that we're watching this morning, President Obama and the First Family packing up, leaving Washington today. They're heading to Martha's Vineyard, where they will be spending their summer vacation. Air Force One expected to leave sometime this afternoon, about 2 o'clock.